um, get underway. And yeah, thanks JB for the invitation to uh, join today. So um, firstly, uh, just a little bit about me. My name is Elliot Harper and I'm a senior marketing cloud technical architect at Cloud Kettle. Um, and uh, I've, uh, I've been using Marketing Cloud for um, many years now, in fact, over eight years. Um, I've written books on Marketing Cloud. I've, I've got uh, many certifications uh, and uh, I'm a Salesforce MVP. In fact, just one of a few um, Salesforce MVPs who specialize in Marketing Cloud. And I've received that award for the past five consecutive years. So it's kind of a, a privilege to, um, to get that recognition. Um, you yeah, very active in the user community. Um, I've written books on Marketing Cloud, including this uh, um, latest one on the, the right here that I co-authored with uh, Adam Spriggs, uh, which is the AMSCO guide as a little plug for your comprehensive 416 page manual on, uh, on AMScript. Um, I also organized the Marketing Cloud Developer Group as I've done since 2015. Uh, and I'm, I do participate um, in certification development uh, and assist Salesforce as a subject matter expert. So um, I, I actually wrote many of the questions um, in the consultant certification. Um, it's just one of the certifications I've assisted with. Um, so anyway, yeah, great to be here today. So as uh, Jacinta um, indicated, uh, messaging um, accounts for 11% um, of, uh, of the exam and um, it will focus on these two topics here. Um, so, you know, out of all the six topics, messaging is the smallest weighting, but the good news is that, you know, this is probably one of the easiest topics to learn. So it's a great way to kind of boost your overall score and attain the certification. And, you know, I mentioned previously that I assisted in uh, developing this new certification or totally updated certification, which uh, came out in June last year. And I actually wrote several questions related to messaging. Now, while I, obviously I can't share what they are, I'll definitely be able to guide you on what you need to study. So in today's session, I'll be discussing the following topics. I'll start by explaining the different personalization options in Marketing Cloud. Then we'll discuss the messaging framework and channels. But firstly, what options are available for personalizing emails? Well, Salesforce Marketing Cloud, as you know, is, is a powerful digital marketing platform that enables marketers to create dynamic and personalized communication by adding personalization strings to content and also dynamically displaying content by creating business rules. And they can achieve all of this in Content Builder using clicks, not code. Now, I assume that you're already familiar with the various uh, personalization capabilities and functionality uh, of Content Builder in Email Studio, as you know, uh, this would have been covered in the administrator certification. But um, if for whatever reason you haven't yet seen Email Studio, um, or, or used it non familiar how you'd create dynamic content, then just let me know and I'll be happy to go and cover this at, at the end of my presentation. Now, yeah, so while um, this capability exists out of the box, if you want to achieve sophisticated personalization, then you need to lean on a, a server side scripting language in Marketing Cloud, um, which includes uh, AMScript, server side JavaScript, and also guide template language, um, which we're going to be covering today. But before we do, I just want to discuss about personalization strings. So most digital marketing platforms offer personalization strings, which may be referred to as merge fields, merge tags, or substitution strings, depending on the platform. Now, this support allows a string-based identifier enclosed in a delimiter to be included on a page or in a message. And when the content is published or sent, then the string is substituted with subscriber data or a system-defined uh, derived value. And Marketing Cloud supports two types of personalization strings, attribute-based and system-based. Let's now take a look at the uh, personalization syntax, then I'll discuss the two types of, um, of uh, strings. 
So personalization strings are enclosed within double percentage delimiters, like in this example. Now, you've probably already used personalization strings when creating uh, emails you know, in this uh, syntax, and the containing string is case insensitive. Now, while AmScript supports personalization strings, the percentage delimits, uh, delimiters should not be included when using AmScript code. And I just bring up this example is while you're not expected to write AmScript as a consultant, you, know, uh, you need to at least identify you know, what it is. We'll be talking about AmScript um, shortly, but you'll notice that when I want to go and use that um, uh, age um, attribute based uh, uh, personalization string. I don't have double percentage when it's in the context of an AmScript block. You can simply go and uh, um, put the, the value there. Now, um, uh, I'll just go on and explain uh, uh, what attribute, how attribute strings are used. So attribute strings are used to personalize content based on the context of the contact or subscriber to which they're sent. Now, these can include the following data sources, email subscriber profile attributes, a sendable data extension fields, for example, in the context of a, say, a send from um, a content builder send flow, journey builder entry source attributes, um, mobile connect data strings, and mobile push attributes. So, Whichever context is used to go and send the message, be it an SMS message or, or email. Um, so for example, if I have a sendable data extension and I'm using the Content Builder SendFlow, I've got a, a field name, first name and last name, then I can include those field names in that, uh, uh, that uh, percentage delimiter pattern. Uh, and the, uh, the value for that um, in that record in my sendable data extension will be uh, replaced at send time. Let's now discuss system-based personalization strings. So Marketing Cloud includes a library of system-based personalization strings, which can be included in a message or on a page to output a value based on the context of the subscriber, contact, or a message. These strings can be categorized into the following functional areas. Firstly, email strings, which include um, date and uh, email settings, like uh, email name and data source and um, job information like job ID and list ID, and also subscriber data like email address and subscriber key. Next, we have um, email URL data strings, which include profile and subscription center and viewers web page links and one click unsubscribe links. Next, we have reply mail management strings, which include reply headers, a reply message, subscriber data related to the original uh, sent message. We also have mobile related uh, system personalization strings for mobile connect messages and contacts, um, in addition to group connect message strings, and also website data strings, which return microsite and page URLs from cloud pages. Let's now take a look at some common system personalization strings in Salesforce Marketing Cloud. So firstly, email name, this for underscore, as we see here, will output the name assigned to an email. Underscore message context will output the context in which the subscriber viewed the message or page. For example, send is output when an email is sent to a subscriber or VAWP is displayed when an email is opened from a view as web page link in an email. Email ADDR will display the email address of the subscriber and underscore subscriber key displays a user-defined identifier representing a subscriber. Now, many of these strings don't really have an application when used on their own. For example, you wouldn't display the message context value in an email. However, when used in conjunction with AmScript, they can be uh, used to conditionally output content as we see in this example on the right hand side here. So here, a paragraph with a link to view an email as a web page is not displayed if the subscriber is currently viewing an email as a web page. Now, this is just one example of how system personalization strings can be used to conditionally display content, content or be used in programmable content. 
So you should familiarize yourself with the available system personalization strings as they have uh, many applications uh, in, in Marketing Cloud. Now I want to discuss the different server-side languages available in Marketing Cloud. As a consultant, you're not expected to code in these languages. However, you do need to understand what the languages are and their capabilities. AmScript is a scripting language. So firstly, AmScript, <laughs> okay. AmScript is a scripting language for Salesforce Marketing Cloud. You can use it to create highly sophisticated, personalized marketing content for email, web, and mobile channels through an extensive set of functions. Now, AmScript can seem intimidating when you're getting started, but it really doesn't have to be, as the language follows a simple syntax and semantics, making it easy to learn and code. There are many different use cases for AmScript, which include performing CRUD operations, that is create, read, update, and delete operations on data extension records, transforming and formatting data, performing math calculations, and integration with sales and service cloud, and also most third-party REST and SOAP APIs through a set of HTTP functions. Let's now um, take a brief look at the AmScript syntax, just so you uh, can identify it. Now, AmScript code is contained within a character sequence that opens and closes with double percentage marks and either contains an inner bracket delimiter for AmScript blocks or an equality character for inline AmScript. All AmScript code must be surrounded by matching opening and closing delimiter patterns, otherwise the code within it will be ignored. And just on a side note here, it's important to recognize the delimiter patterns and understand the difference between um, what is AmScript, uh, either an AmScript block inline AmScript, and a personalization string. So even though uh, personalization strings also have a similar uh, delimiter pattern, uh, it's different from AmScript. Now, AmScript is a server-side scripting language where the code is interpreted before um, the HTML page is loaded or when the message is sent. So if you go and um, inspect the uh, source of a web page or email message in a user agent, like a, an email client, you won't see the actual AmScript code, which is different from client-side scripting languages like JavaScript. So, Unlike other general purpose languages like JavaScript and Perl and Python, AmScript is a server-side scripting language that's been developed for a specific runtime environment, that is Salesforce Marketing Cloud, where scripts are interpreted and executed when the content is rendered. And AmScript is a, a language in two parts. It, it's, a, it's a syntax and a library of functions. And with an understanding of these, it's actually possible to quickly gain proficiency in the, in the language without any prior programming or scripting experience. Now, as AmScript is a server-side language, you can include this uh, code in any location, in an, uh, in an email, in a web page, an SMS or mobile push message. And similar to other scripting languages, AmScript is interpreted and not compiled, which means it's interpreted in the order that it's written. So let's say you're using AmScript to include personalized content in an email, then the AmScript code will need to be defined before or at the point where the personalized content should appear. So that's just a brief overview of AmScript uh, and its syntax and what it does. Let's now take a look at um, server-side JavaScript. So server-side JavaScript or SSJS is a scripting language for Salesforce Marketing Cloud. So while AmScript is a proprietary scripting language that enables sophisticated content personalization across channels, SSJS is based on JavaScript, which is the world's most widely used programming language. And SSJS enables you to extend the scripting capabilities of Marketing Cloud through an extensive set of functions. And there are many use cases for SSJS, but which primarily focus on marketing automation, API integration, and web page development. 
SSJS features can be broadly categorized into four areas. Starting off, we've got core functions, which enable rapid application um, and development. We have uh, uh, platform functions that actually very similar to AmScript, and in and many of them actually are, are wrappers for AmScript. Um, these are, are separate from the core library and, and they're uh, more performant. Um, we have uh, API functions, um, as does uh, uh, AmScript. Um, so uh, Marketing Cloud obviously has a, a very extensive um, API, both SOAP and REST based, and uh, using um, the SSJS API functions or AmScript API functions, you can um, access many of the uh, objects available in the SOAP API. And uh, fourthly, um, we have WS Proxy. And I've just included, I guess, this slide just to provide additional context. You're certainly not expected to know these um, for the exam, but just to kind of show you the breadth of what SSJ is and understand the differences. Um, so uh, this is an alternative to to using API functions. It provides a, a, a web service proxy for interacting with a SOAP API through code. So next, I'd like to cover guide template language. And um, you, you won't expect to, to be this, um, to see this on the uh, exam either. Well, I don't know, there might be a, a question, but um, you would need, least you need to know what guide template language is. So um, guide template language, or is it also referred to as guide or simply GTL, um, is based on moustache and handlebars. So moustache, which is aptly named after its curly base syntax that resembled a sideways moustache, is a popular templating engine that's widely available across different languages and runtimes. So um, moustache is built on a simple syntax and provides what's called a logicless approach to templating as it lacks control flow statements, like you don't see if and else conditional statements. Um, however, um, conditional evaluation can be achieved uh, by using what are called built-in block helpers. Now, handlebars is the other part of GTL, and this is a superset of moustache, and it uses things called helpers, literals and partials, to add extensibility and, and minimal logic to moustache. Now, using these two template engines, guide, template language provides a declarative syntax that leverages the, the advantages of a template-based content architecture while also retaining interoperability with AmScript and server-side JavaScript scripting languages. So what are the benefits of GTL and why would you use it? So firstly, um, you know, Moustache is very popular, um, easy to use language. So um, uh, most front-end developers would have worked with some flavor of um, moustache or handlebars and uh, you know, um, reactive client-side frameworks or you know, use uh, moustache. Um, it it's works with JSON data and JSON is schemaless. So if you're, if you're um, working with data, and let me give you an example of this. Um, let's say perhaps I have a um, some uh, uh, order confirmation data or a, sh a shipping information data that comes from an e-commerce platform. So, um, uh, and this uh, this data is actually in a, a, a structured JSON format. Um, and in order to represent this data in Marketing Cloud, you would actually um, need to store it in two or three different data extensions. And that is because let's say that we've got their billing address and their shipping address, and we've got um, the order number, and then you've got the order line items related to that order number. So, so you can't represent this um, type of data in a, um, in a fixed uh, RDBMS style schema like we have in data extensions. Um, so it's really uh, you know, great for, um, uh, uh, data sources that use um, uh, JSON data, such as e-commerce and API feeds. Um, and it, it's really best suited for um, non-complex uh, data structures. So we can't do any uh, sophisticated filtering on, on this data. Um, another benefit is that it, it really facilitates rapid development. So it's a great way to, um, for example, if you want to go and uh, display uh, multiple um, line items or kind of uh, products from an abandoned cart, um, you can do this effortlessly with uh, GTL. 
so the use cases and uh, of GTL is that it's really for using working with JSON data in an email. You wouldn't use it on a web page. I mean, you'd use server-side JavaScript for that. Um, I'd say transactional email is a, is a great use case, and also um, uh, you know potentially uh, content-based feeds um, such as uh, social media, weather, blogs, and more. Um, so, I'm sorry about that noise. Just something fell over in my office. <laughs> So let's go and take a look at the language comparison between um, server-side JavaScript, uh, AmScript, and GTL. So firstly, AmScript. So um, let's go and pull this up here. Um, so AmScript, you know, it's a server-side language. It follows simple syntax and semantics. Um, the main focus of AmScript is on content personalization um, and also interacting interaction with uh, data extensions and uh, external integrations such as Sales and Service Cloud, um, Marketing Cloud API functions, or, and and external APIs as well. Um, but the main thing about AmScript is uh, I often joke it's built for a different era. Um, it doesn't support JSON. Server-side JavaScript, however, and it's very similar to AmScript, but instead it's based on JavaScript. It has actually has a more comprehensive set of functions that compared to, uh, to AmScript. Um, from count AmScript has 148 functions and server-side JavaScript has 332 from memory, <laughs> last time I counted anyway. Um, but you know, unlike uh, JavaScript uh, in a web browser, it doesn't work with the document object model and it doesn't, you can't load exterior libraries. So for example, I can't go and uh, open, or I can't go and load um, jQuery or um, any other libraries. Now guide template language um, is not a scripting language, unlike uh, AmScript and server-side JavaScript. It's a templating language that's built on mustache and handlebars, natively uh, passes JSON, and you know uh, you typically would use it in conjunction with either AmScript or server-side JavaScript. Um, and all three of these languages are interpreted by the same common core engine that's used to send messages from Marketing Cloud called OMM, which uh, I'll discuss shortly. So next. Um, Let's uh, move on to the next topic, messaging. And before I do, um, something has just collapsed in my office. So uh, allow me just uh, a few seconds just to, to pop it back up. Uh, there we go, just one second. I had it's quite comical. I've got this kind of table that's toppled over, which I was supporting with my uh, left toe. Anyway, <laughs> so on to messaging. Now, I just want to call out the different channels available for sending messages for Marketing Cloud, all of which are listed here. Um, so a few notes. So I, I'm not going to read each of these uh, channels out in turn. Um, I'm sure that uh, you can read for yourself, but um, just a few notes. So obviously email, we're all familiar with Email Studio. You have uh, SMS and MMS. This is uh, enabled through uh, Mobile Connect. Um, on a side note, MMS is only available in North America. Then we have the ability to send both uh, mobile app push messages and mobile app inbox messages through mobile push. Um, more specifically by integrating with the SDK or software development kit. So that is if I, I, I can have a, as a developer, go and build a mobile app um, and then using mobile push, we can send um, push notifications to that mobile device. Um, either you know, we could, this could occur within a journey or um, uh, it could be a kind of a, a batch a trigger, or it could be um, location-based. So we can set up what are kind of geofences, uh, and when um, that that device uh, and that uh, subscriber um, enters uh, the perimeter fence in that geolocation, then that can cause a message to be pushed to them. Uh, mobile app inbox messages. This is kind of uh, more recent, and I can't. I probably would be on the. Uh, on the exam, at least you should certainly know about it. And um, you've probably all interacted with this before. Most apps these days have their own inboxes. So a LinkedIn you know, would be a classic example. Um, 
and this gives you the ability to go and uh, uh, push messages to inbox, but also to go and change the status and uh, you know, set a, a, um, a TTL or kind of time to life. Um, so choose uh, when to evoke or that they expire from that inbox. Um, next, we have um, web pages. Um, so this is uh, enabled through um, cloud pages. Um, the other channels that we have um, is instant messaging. Um, so, you know, today um, we have uh, Line and Facebook Messenger, um, which are two popular um, instant messaging apps. Line, I think, is just only available in, in Japan. Um, and uh, this is enabled through uh, a, the Group Connect. Um, However, on a side note, you notice that observe that um, new to the January release um, is a WhatsApp integration. So this actually doesn't fall under Group Connect. This is kind of completely separate uh, and it won't appear in the exam. Um, but uh, you know, on a side note, I've actually been looking at this uh, WhatsApp integration. And it's quite interesting that uh, WhatsApp actually have to go and approve the templates um, that you create before you can start sending messages just to check they don't contain promotional content. Um, anyway, uh, but yeah, just focus on kind of line and Facebook Messenger. So next I want to um, explain uh, how Marketing Cloud processes messages. So because as a consultant, I think that it's a kind of in, important to understand um, you know, how the, the platform works. So when a, a message is sent from Marketing Cloud or a web page is viewed, a series of processes occur to interpret um, and output the content for either sending a message or displaying that content. Now, whether you are sending an email or an SMS or MMS or mobile push message or opening a landing page, all content is rendered through a process known as outbound mail management or OMM. The exact process of OMM varies by message type, but broadly speaking, OMM firstly analyzes the message. So here it prepares databases for the, uh, the sending of the job. And uh, ide it identifies the message type and the subscriber source, like from a list or data extension, and whether the send contains personalization or dynamic content. So this stage doesn't create the message, but only just uh, uh, prepares the databases. So the second is stage is that it builds the message structure where you know, say in the context of an email would include, you know, what's the subject line, the HTML body and the text body and the preheader, and maybe now the AMP version, but uh, again, um, uh, the uh, AMP for email certainly won't be on, on the consultant exam. Thirdly, um, it analyzes subscribers. So at this point, the message structure is now in place and OMM you know, runs the content against the sub subscriber list. So if your email send contains personalization or dynamic content, like it includes personalization strings or AMP script or server-side JavaScript or even a guide template language, then it's during this process that OMM determines the appropriate content to display for each subscriber. Um, but this process only serves as a placeholder until the next step, which is to go and build and send the message. So you know, by this stage, OMM has kind of set all the plans and kind of uh, framework in place for that uh, entire send and in the context of email it will go and bundle these into batches of 500 um, and synchronously send them out to uh, subscribers inboxes so I know mean, the speed of which messages go out and uh, how quickly pages are rendered is really depends on the level of um, sophistication and the amount of uh, um, uh, dynamic or programmable content in your email. Um, there are many other different factors, you know, also including um, if you're, particularly if you're retrieving uh, external content at send time, then that would uh, impact the performance of the send. So we've looked at the available different channels. I just want to drill down on one channel because um, you, you would need to understand this for the exam. And this is, um, uh, mobile connect so within mobile connect this is the ability to go and send out sms and mms messages um, you have various template types available for messaging um, now you just need to know what these are um, as they may come up 
So I've kind of summarized this on this uh, table here. Um, you can see that there are uh, all seven of these. There is actually an eighth one, um, but I excluded it as it won't come up in the exam. It's somewhat obscure. It's just for SMS unsubscribes from Australia. Um, so, um, but here we can see that we've got, and I've, I've also grouped them together. So we've got um, outbound message and outbound media. So outbound message is for sending an SMS to your subscribers. Outbound media would be for sending an MMS to your subscribers. We have a mobile opt-in. So again, if you want to invite people to subscribe, um, I, I won't read out these uh, in turn. I mean, you can read for yourself. Um, text response is a very popular um, uh, method too, which is to create a automatic uh, SMS or MMS message response to incoming messages. Um, and actually using Mobile Connect, you can create some pretty sophisticated uh, message flows or kind of chains um, through uh, what's called next keywords. Um, other points to uh, mention again, not an, an acronym that you would expect to see in the exam, but as a consultant, uh, you'd probably hear this term used frequently, and that is MT and MO. MT is mobile terminated and MO is mobile originated, which are types of messages. So an outbound message, for example, is uh, MT, a mobile terminated message. You're sending uh, a message to uh, a, a device and it's terminated the device. MO, as this name implies, originates from a message. So um, for example, a mobile opt-in, email opt-in, or maybe a, you know, a text response that um, people maybe would see a, a billboard with a um, you know, text, your name and keyword to, um, to this six digit number here. Um, also just on the topic of messaging, I think it's important to understand this notion of um, uh, short codes and long codes as they may uh, come up in the exam. So uh, a short code is a uh, numeric Six, uh, a six digit number um, that's used in the US to go and uh, as that kind of FOM number and also a, a ascending number sending to a, a short code. In short, it's a, it's a mobile number um, that's used by the platform. Um, a long code is uh, used in, um, I think, most if not all other jurisdictions outside of uh, the US, um, which is a, um, uh, a, a, um, a full phone number. So in Australia, it's a 10 digit, digit number. So we, we don't um, have this notion of short codes in Australia. Well, in fact, we do, but they're um, extremely ex expensive and just actually exclusively used for sex chat lines. So probably not a, um, appropriate for the um, marketing cloud sense. So I just want to, um, before we wrap up and uh, close up for questions, share some community resources. Um, so uh, this isn't an exhaustive list, but um, it's just, uh, if you're uh, looking at learning more about um, uh, messaging and some of the scripting languages available in Marketing Cloud, I really encourage you to go and check out um, these resources here, including how to SFMC. There's some awesome content there. Um, I'll just briefly rattle them off. You've got Ivan Razine's blog, amscriptxyz, amscript.com, which is um, Jackson Chen's blog, uh, Zuzani Archenska of Salesforce Marketing Dat Cloud, Greg Gifford of GordHoningdon.com, how to SSMC, which is a, is a fantastic community of uh, marketing cloud users. Adam Spiggs, Picture to Moves. My own vlog, make sure you check that out. Shameless plug for mc.chat and also pluralsite.com. Um, so if you want to um, learn more about uh, marketing cloud topics, there's a growing number of marketing cloud um, topics for um, administrators, consultants, and developers on Pluralsite, which is this... Uh, um, technical uh, video based learning content. So I'm now going to go and stop sharing and um, start my camera. And hopefully I, I haven't been on mute for the past uh, 41 minutes. Um, no, we so, can hear you. And that uh, little tidbit about the short codes in Australia was rather uh, interesting, shall I say. <laughs> so thank you for sharing that with us, Elliot. Right. <laughs> Um, we do have some questions from the audience. So thank you for um, giving um, that very informative um, uh, session there about messaging. Um, 
And by the way, for those of you who have not been on previous uh, uh, sessions of the boot camp here, I'm Jenna Matson, and I am part of the How to SFMC uh, community. Um, so uh, I am here to ask Elliot your questions. So please continue to send them over. And um, uh, <laughs> so we, uh, please continue to send them over, and we will get them asked or answered by Elliot. All right. So first up, um, GTL versus um, AMP script versus SSJS, really. Uh, and I'm adding the SSJS part in there. Um, if I want to, it, they're asking, if I want to read a JSON file and input the content into an email for delivery, think RSS feed, is it best to use a combination of AMP script and GTL? Or so, so, yes, so, so you always would in that um, with GTL, you have to go and define what the data source is. That's the very first thing you do. And the only way to do that is actually by um, using AMP script. Um, so, uh, uh, again, kind of, I'm happy to kind of guide through examples. In fact, I'm going to be writing a blog uh, post next month on guide template language. In fact, uh, also uh, Greg Gifford, Gortonington.com, actually uh, posted quite a lengthy article on on, on that. Um, you know, and the uh, I'm a, a a big fan of GTL. Greg isn't. <laughs> it's a kind of personal preference, I guess. Um, well, but one of the things I love about this specific use case and using in an email is. Um, like I said, let's say that I've got a um, an abandoned cart email um, where you've got a notion of a maybe it's a session ID and uh, and items related to that session. Um, the only way to kind of present this this uh, relationship of having um, many different you know, products for a, a given session or order would be to use um, two data extensions. And in AMS script, you'd need to create what's called a process loop. Um, but I mean, guide template language will um, uh, negates all of that. You can simply have in JSON, you have a notion of uh, what's called an array. An array represents many things. It could be either strings or objects. Um, and as soon as it finds an object, then it will just simply iterate through all the items in the array. So um, where would you use AMP script? Um, so A, to define the data source, but secondly, to go and um, uh, add personalization. So let's say that our uh, for a, a, a given, um, in that JSON data, I've got a, I don't know, a price, for example, and I want to display this in a currency format. Let's say it's Euro, um, with a, where the comma, you know, is, is very particular where it appears. Um, so you can simply use an inline AMP script function inside a GTL tag. But rather than using percentage percentage equals, that delimiter pattern I showed you, you simply just use an opening equal character, identical to Excel actually, um, and include your AMP script there. So, um, so yes, the answer is you just only use them together. Yep, and you can use the reason I added SSJS in there was because you can use um, SSJS to parse through uh, JSON objects as well. Uh, is my preferred method as well. I'm with I'm with Greg on that one. All right. Uh, <laughs> so with AMP script, um, they're saying uh, they use uh, can can they use Salesforce marketing cloud attributes to personalize if they are sending an email from the sales cloud? Um, can we create an email ready in Email Studio and send it in Sales Cloud? And will that personalization work? Okay, sending an email from Sales Cloud. I mean, there are only really two ways to do this. Jenna, pull me up if uh, I speak out of turn here. Oh well, you probably I mean, know better you, than I do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so, so you've got you've got a notion of, um, and this has been around for like ten years. Um, I just used it last week called email send. Um, so I, there are three ways. In fact, you can go and set up a, a triggered send, and we'd have to go and write kind of Apex code and um, to go and set up a, a before after trigger, um, which will kind of park now. I assume you want to go and do, do this declaratively. Um, but uh, if you go and search for the Marks and Cloud app within it, you can uh, see there's a send email link. I think from memory, um, when you click on it, it, it opens this hideous Visual Force page um, with this uh, send email flow. Um, but um, in it, you can um, choose any uh, campaign or report. You see all the available um, and filter on them as well. Mm -hmm. You can search for all the available um, uh, emails in, in Content Builder, um, and then just uh, and and select um, who the email is from and go and send uh, to that audience. And actually, uh, create a, a triggered send. 
um, I think, or maybe it's a Salesforce send behind the scenes. I think it's a um, Salesforce send. Sales, sales, it's been I think a long right, time Salesforce though. Send. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Salesforce send. Um, you know, that, 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 um, that method, while it's, it still um, uh, exists today, um, the, the more preferred method is to use distributed marketing, um, mm -hmm. which uh, it comes at a cost, but this um, enables you to, um, or enables sales cloud users to go and customize the emails um, uh, that, that, uh, that they're sending, that they can go and um, uh, using kind of a, a template-based structure to go and select images from a dropdown and type in some text and uh, send it directly to a, a list or campaign members right from Sales Cloud. Um, but I mean, regarding personalizations and uh, where I think this, where this question was heading mm -hmm. um, is that, um, you know, this is the kind of tricky thing. And I actually really want to throw in a caveat here. So, um, so, uh, uh, well, yes, you can use personalization um, uh, in theory. Um, I mean, you would have to, that data would have to exist in synchronized data extensions to go and personalize the email. The downside is you can't preview that email before it's sent. Mm -hmm. um, you can in distributed marketing, but not, um, so it's, uh, I, I just say send and pray. Um, it, it's, uh, <laughs> uh, and on a side note, you can actually send to um, a Salesforce campaign a report directly from Marketing Cloud, just in Content Builder SendFlow, you see Salesforce audiences, but it's the, uh, the, 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 the same approach. Um, so yes, you could write AM script and just kind of hope that uh, um, it's uh, all the data required data is there. And I just want to ask everyone here as a favor, never ever do this. So, um, uh, and that is there's, uh, you know, in AM script, you've got uh, a number of functions for retrieving, creating and updating content from Salesforce. So I've seen people actually use the retrieve Salesforce objects function, which will go and get data from Salesforce in real time and use to personalize an email. Um, and, and it will work. Um, I typically use it kind of on web pages, but mm -hmm. um, it's extremely slow. And I have one customer who's doing a send to 1.5 million people and they called me up and they said, Elliot, you know, we're sending out this email, 337 gone out so far, and we've calculated it will take another 1.5 years for the send to finish. <laughs> um, and uh, I mean, that's just, uh, um, yeah, so just uh, reserve its use really for web pages. And please, just on this, uh, uh, on this same topic, never use uh, the create single create Salesforce object or update single Salesforce object that is um, create or update records in Salesforce at send time uh -uh. Um, because Salesforce is a notion of object lock and contention and so when when you do that like create a record and uh, you know you learn marketing cloud by making mistakes as uh, Adam Spiggs would say that's and so this true is one though that I, 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 I learned <laughs> is that um, you know I sent an I, I had a client wanted to actually create campaign member records at, at the time of email send no worries I go and add the code did um, test it the heck out of it and it worked beautifully and did the actual send to 10,000 subscribers it did 135 and then stopped uh, and because in sales cloud you've got this notion of object lock and contention and depending on the type of object and that is more specifically uh, the relationship with other objects depends on the the level of um, lock contention but when this occurs it locks the entire object from being modified so mm -hmm. um, you know you've got OMM making all these asynchronous requests from their slot workers of 500 emails each and uh, trying to perform these operations and they're just kind of timing out so uh, yeah, anyway. if you're using the connector it's much easier to have that data, um, you know, from each of the objects uh, pulled into the marketing cloud and then, you know, uh, query against it into another data extension if you want to reference it. What's yeah, it, it is. I mean, it's still near time, not real time. Yeah. So at best it's 15 minutes. So Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But still, that's close. Yeah. Um, and, and, and but by the way, I created, uh, I confess, created that um, code to go and create campaign members before, um, you know, we had any of this capability in, in Journey Builder. Obviously, you'd use that today. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, on that same note, and, it's, and I think you touched on this. I'm just going to, someone asked while you were, um, uh, while you were speaking there. So I'm, I'm, just going to loop it back in real quick. Um, they're asking if you can reference a Salesforce object using a lookup function, um, for, using an AMP script lookup function from the marketing cloud. Um, and I think you did say you can, but it should you is the... Yeah, so, 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 so you can. I mean, this... Yeah. Uh, this, um, <laughs> so, uh, 
uh, the true Salesforce objects actually returns a row set. So very mm -hmm. similar to lookup rows. In fact, actually better because you can actually define a criteria like uh, equals or greater than or less than or um, which you can't do in lookup rows. Um, but yeah, for that reason, it's just not very performant. Um, I wouldn't use this for sending emails. It's, it's fantastic for, for, for web pages. Um, or uh, look, uh, uh, maybe if you are insistent in using emails, I would go and reserve it um, for you know, um, journey-based sends where maybe contacts are trickling through. Um, you certainly, it doesn't scale well. Yeah, and they're saying that um, uh, they've added to that. The reasoning is to go back to the sales cloud is not is for the real-time data, not have to wait for the 15-minute sync. Um, yeah, but e even then, like Elliot's saying, you're you're risking processing time, and you could end up bulking your send time by doing that. In fact, yeah. over that 12 over that 15-minute wait time. So. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, we'll kind of gang it up, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. Hey. Okay, so sticking with some AMP script, uh, how can we test personalization screens and AMP script code? Um, by, uh, so it depends on the context. If you're talking uh, about an email, um, you simply go and preview the email um, or, or do a test send. Um, uh, so that's... Um, I, I assume what they're referring to. Um, yeah, if, it's, so. uh, if it's mobile connect, you can't. Um, no, nope. <laughs> you have to go. Well, you have to go and send uh, an actual SMS to yourself, and the same for web pages. Right. I mean, you, you, know, you, you can now actually from the January release with the cloud pages. Um, now you can actually preview. Um, uh, you've always been able to preview. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been there's been some quirky change, but um, anyway, I always go and just just publish and. Uh, to preview my change and have some kind of a quirky flow to um, update that content, my code yeah. in real time. But, um, but I'm assuming they're talking about from a, um, a an email message. Email. Yeah, yeah, which, yeah, yeah, it, which it's in just, that just case. Previewing. Yeah, and, and of course, like I said, with Salesforce audiences, you can't. Um, Mm -hmm. That's just a, a downside. But if you are doing it with from like within an email, you load up a test set to a data extension, and you could test your personalization and your AMP script code against that data extension. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. This is an interesting question. Very interesting question. Um, I didn't see who asked it because it's floated on past now. But um, thank you for asking this because um, this is a great consideration, and it is not on the exam, so we are way off the exam here, folks. So I'm just gonna. Okay throw that out there. Um, could PHP and SQL be used instead of SSJS or would that be considered a bad practice? No, I, uh, so PHP can't be used in marketing cloud. Mm -hmm. um, it's not supported by OMM. It only uses the, the only server-side uh, scripting languages are AMScript and server-side JavaScript, GTL being a template language, but um, yeah, so you can't use PHP in, uh, in Marketing Cloud. Um, uh, and yeah, I'm not quite sure. Maybe that question is going somewhere else. Um, yeah, I think there's so actually, too, like app building. There, there, yeah, there, there, there's a there's a help article actually because it, I think it's quite a common question I saw the other day about uh, PHP support P, PHP support in Marketing Cloud, <laughs> but no, um, you can't use PHP. Um, yep. All right, that was a good question though. Um, worth mm. throwing out there. Very theoretical. Okay, we're going to talk about some SMS now. Um, sure. So text responses. Um, if yep. we have a long code, one-way message support, can we use text text response method? Is there a workaround for that? Oh, well, and it is a bit of a kind of gobbled. Um, uh, oh, sorry, unclear yeah. question. Um, so, 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 um, I, I always used um, long codes with. Uh, um, text response messages. So the answer is yes, of course. There are some considerations, however. So firstly, um, uh, the what's the first consideration is um, uh, when going and using those um, you know, friendly names, that is you can, uh, instead of having a mobile phone number, and in fact, this is for text response. If it's a, uh, um, uh, if someone's responding to a text message, um, that is you send them a, uh, a, a mobile terminated message and then they go and uh, respond to that, um, then yes, absolutely you can. And I've actually got a, um, a good video on that. And I'll just go and put this on the chat window. Um, uh, in fact, just go to, uh, you have to go and 
I'll just go and set the, the link now. Um, and there are, or there is a, a, cons a cons two considerations. Um, this is a video I did uh, years ago and um, it's called kind of a next keywords and creating conversation chains. Let me just paste this in here. Um, I'll paste it to everyone. Perfect. Meeting, go and check out that video. Um, and uh, um, two considerations. So firstly, um, with that uh, text response, there's a um, there's an open window. Um, that is, uh, you send a message um, and that initiates the next keyword, and then they can go and respond to that message in that message window. Before um, previously, um, this is going back a few years ago. That message window was by default an hour, and you could not change it yourself. You could have to speak to support to change it. Now. By default, it's it's open, completely open. But a a, a um, you know a disadvantage or consideration with that is, let's say I just have one single long code. I go and send uh, an outbound message saying, you know, if you want to go and um, uh, uh, to uh, confirm your uh, appointment, reply yes, um, and someone replies yes, um, then. Um, they don't need to reply with uh, with a keyword and yes. So they don't need to have a, a keyword prefix. It, the next keyword would automatically uh, pen that that um, prefix to the text response message. But um, bear in mind that it is just locked that entire conversation from uh, in that long code from being used for anything else. So if I was, I, I can't send them another message saying um, you know uh, what is your favorite color um, and I can say orange because it's that makes sense. It's just um, it's tied to that mobile number. It's, if I if if Marketing Cloud gets a response saying orange, it's not going to to know what to do with that because there's a um, you've got a, um, this. Uh, you can only have kind of one open conversation um, by long code. Um, the other thing is that when sending out these messages, um, you can't have that you know, 11 character friendly name. It has to be a phone number for someone to actually to, uh, to, to reply to. That's another consideration. Keeping on the SMS subject, um, and this, this, is, uh, this is kind of an interesting question. Um, how do you get a short code? And I think that's dependent on what country you're residing in. Yeah, so I, I mean, I've, uh, I'm no expert. The, the process varies by country. I thought short codes were almost exclusive to US. Um, certainly, like I said, not available in, in Australia. It never will be, I'm told, um, for Mobile Connect. Um, so you know, speak with your account manager. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, And uh, in the US as well, uh, Jenny, you can kind of uh, touch on this. There's, it's a very arduous process, isn't yeah. it? It takes several months because it has to be registered with every single provider. Um, and, you know, there are actually only kind of three partners, I think, that can actually uh, do that process, follow that process. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not the one to answer those questions. I, I, yeah. I don't do a lot with um, SMS messaging and I am not the person that gets those short codes. Um, uh, someone just responded that they, yes, they are exclusive to the US, but I think someone earlier said that um, they're used in Canada as well. Um, so yeah. uh, I, yeah, you know, I mean, check yeah. with your... Yeah, there, there, there are over a hundred countries, so I can't... Uh... Um, yep. And and actually depends on the message aggregator that's being used as well. Exactly. Um, so. So yeah. So check with your A, but that is not a question on the test. So know that. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, we don't have any more questions at this moment. Uh, if you do have any more questions, you've got a few minutes to ask them. If not, JB. Sure. And um, uh, before you hand over, I'll just put my uh, blog, vlog in here. As at the bottom of it, there's a link. Anyone can go and uh, schedule just a 30 minute call with me, text you to Calendly. You can see my calendar is kind of completely free as a service that I offer to the community. So I actually spend often kind of hours a week just uh, helping others. So I want to kind of extend this, particularly as you're on your, um, you know, uh, on your uh, learning path to attain the certification. Thank you, Elliot, and thank you, Jenna. Yep. Uh, so I have uh, inputted in the chat window uh, the form to fill out. So if 
you have any questions related to the boot camp uh, to the consultant certification or any questions related to the topics that we discussed during this boot camp sessions uh, please fill out this form and here's your another chance to get them answered directly and i also uh, input at uh, the playlist that we are going to add all the boot camp sessions and our next session is going to be on next uh, coming tuesday that is on the 2nd of march that is by brian richardson on the topic integration and that will be at the same time 9 pm eastern and with that we're going to wind it up thank you everyone for joining us and thank you very much elliot for sharing your insights Cheers. and thank, thank you jenna as always Cheers. yep thank you both have a good night, night. day have a good night. bye <laughs>